Hi, how you doing? Justin Sandico here. Welcome to Folk Fingerstyle Basic Patterns 1. Now I'm hoping you've seen the previous lesson where I explained what fingers go on what strings because I'm not going to take us through that again now. And also, it's very important that you've got the tab up in front of you. So if you've stumbled upon this on YouTube, get over to the website justinguitar.com, find this lesson uh, using the lesson index and make sure that you've got this pattern one in front of you because I'm going to be referring to it quite a lot as we start going through the close-ups and stuff. So, and it really is lots easier if you can see the pattern. So. Um, Let's get to a close-up and get stuck in straight away. So this is the first pattern we're going to learn. You might have noticed that we're using our thumb on two different strings and we're just using the first and second fingers for this pattern one. Now the first thing and the most important thing to start off with when you're doing this sort of finger style is getting used to the idea of the thumb moving strings. So what I'd recommend you start off with is just playing the thumb on the fifth string and then the fourth string. Remember this is a, just a regular C chord, in case you missed that bit. And we should just be playing the fifth string and the fourth string with the thumb. Because sometimes it helps if you rest the first and second fingers on their designated strings and get used to the idea of that thumb moving over between the two strings. Remember this is the count, it's one, two, three, four, because the thumb is always playing on the beat. Two, three, four. Now have a look at the actual pattern, the, the tab of it, and the notation, and you'll see that there are four notes with the little down stems there, and they correlate in the tab to the notes that are on the third fret and the second fret. So they're the notes on the beat. Now, what we're going to start off with is adding in some notes now to our pattern. And the first note we're adding in is the second string, and hopefully you remember that the second finger looks after the second string. And if you look at the tab, you'll see that comes with the same as beat one. So if we're just going to add that note now, we're going to keep our bass and we're going to add in that one note on beat one. So we'd have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'd recommend that you practice that a few times, nice and slowly, even slower than this if you need to. make sure that you can do that comfortably before we add in any other notes. Now the next note we're going to add in is on the G string, and the G string is played by the first finger, and that note comes in between the second beat and the third beat, so it would be the and after two. If we add that in now with our first note as well, we'd have one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. It's really important to get that count. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Now there's just one more note for the pattern, so let's add that in, and that is the second finger playing the second string in the first fret, of course, because it's the C chord, and. Uh, in the uh, C chord on the second string, there's a, a note finger in the first fret. Um, and we're going to add that in after the three. So that's coming on the and after three. So the pattern now looks like one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Now what's really important at this stage is that you do it slowly enough to get it right and in time. And if that means that you're doing it like this speed, one, two, and three, and four. That's fine. Do it as slow or as fast as you need to. Now I would suspect after a little bit of practice that you should be okay doing it at this kind of speed. Maybe one, two, and three, And you probably don't want to go much faster than that for a little while until your fingers really know what is going on. Because it needs to get automated. With these patterns, they have to become 
instinctive. You should be able to talk or watch television or whatever while you're doing these patterns. But that'll take practice. You just have to do them over and over again. Now, after you feel really comfortable with it, you might like to start speeding it up, but don't try and speed up too early. Once you've got it and, and you're feeling comfortable with it, you know, here, this sort of thing, just try speeding it up a little bit. If you want to, you can put it with a metronome, but it's also fine just practicing these things without a metronome. Okay, let's move on to pattern two now, which is very similar. We still have the thumb moving on the beat, one, two, three, four, but you're now going to see that the first note in the melody department is played on beat two. You'll see there, if you look at the music again, this is really important to see the music, that the first note, the three, this is the third fret of the fifth string, is played with the thumb on the fifth string by itself, and then on beat two, we, our thumbs moved over to the fourth string and we're using our second finger to play the second string. So we're starting with thumb, thumb and second finger together. Just like before, you wanna just add in one note at a time to the patterns when you're starting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. Then we might add in the next one, two, three, and four. 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 Just again, really slowly, making sure that you get it right and that it's in time. One, two, three, and four. It's really important that the thumb is nice and even and that the other notes just fit in. Two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And again, you practice it slowly until you can do it at a kind of reasonable speed. Now what I'd recommend actually, once you can do those two patterns, before we go any further, is trying to link the patterns after each other, because these two are very, very commonly played one after the other. So we'd end up having pattern one, pattern two, pattern one, pattern two, pattern one, two, pattern one. very, very common to link those two things together. So I'd have a try at that as well. Okay, we're now on to pattern number three, which we're changing to a G chord with the fretting hand, just a regular old G. Now what's really important here to realize is that the patterns are the same with the fingers and the order of the movements, but the thumb is now playing the bass note on the, that needs to move over to the sixth string, so to the note G, and it'll still be jumping over to the fourth string. So instead of like on the C chord, it was going fifth string, fourth string over and over again. When we change to the G chord, it's going sixth string, fourth string. It's only a little change, but it's something that I would highly recommend you doing exactly what I'm doing now and practicing just moving between the sixth string and the fourth string and kind of get used to that. Now I'm hoping that you won't have too much difficulty once your thumb's used to doing that to play the same patterns. Because we've got here thumb and second finger together. Thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb. Together, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb. It's exactly the same as that first pattern that we looked at with the C chord, but the bass note, the note that's on beats one and three, has moved over to the sixth string. All of the rest is the same. Again, really slowly make sure that you get it right when you feel confident. Start to speed it up. 
Okay, now pattern four is exactly the same as pattern two, but now we're on the G chord. So this one is starts off with a bass note by itself, thumb and second finger together, bass note, first finger, and thumb. Bass together, bass one thumb. Bass together, thumb one. And again, we would try and link patterns three and four, so we'd have this. Pattern four. Pattern three. Pattern four. Once you feel confident with that, what I would recommend is starting to mix up the patterns a little bit now. So we would go from pattern one, which is a C chord, to pattern three, which is the same thing but with a G chord. And try and get the change without having a pause in there. So you go one, two, and three, and four. One. And of course, maybe you might play one and two on the C chord, and then three and four on the G chord. Don't be surprised if it takes quite a lot of practice to get these patterns automated. Don't expect to just be able to learn what they are and do it and change between the different chords and the different patterns right away. It doesn't work like that. It didn't work like that for me and I've seen hundreds of students over the years really struggle with this stuff. You have to just do it slowly and accurately. Take one pattern, practice it over and over again until you're confident with it, then learn another one. And I know I'm going through a few patterns in this one video, but I don't want to have to spend ages and ages just on one pattern and end up having loads and loads of very long and probably quite boring videos. So it's up to you now to stop and do the practice, get that pattern sorted out properly and be able to do it. Now there's one really important thing that I need to explain to you which is the idea of the different chords because so far we just looked at a C chord and a G chord. But really what it's about is whether a chord has a fifth string root or a sixth string root. So the common chords with a fifth string root, you'd have C of course, maybe B7, A minor, that's kind of the main chord, G with a B bass if you want to get all fancy, you can use that as well. With the sixth string root you've got G chord, E minor, F I guess, if you're using your bar chords or any of your you know, E shaped bar chords. Um, You've also got now a little bit of a kind of a funny business going on here, which is the D chord. What do you do with the D chord? Hang on, that's got a fourth string root and it kind of muddles all of our patterns up. Now the trick with the D chord is, well there's a couple of different ways of, of dealing with D. Most commonly done when you've got a D chord is you move all of your fingers down a string. So the thumb would then take care of the fourth string and the third string and your first finger will end up playing the second string and your third finger will take the thinner string and your third finger just doesn't get any action at all. So that's the most common way for a D chord. So you just move all of your fingers down a string and play the same pattern like we played with a C chord, but just everything toward the ground one string. The other approach which is quite an interesting one, I think it sounds pretty cool, is to play a D with an F sharp bass, something we looked at in the intermediate course, and treat it as a six string root. That's a very, very common way around it. Um, there's some other tricks as well, but we'll probably get onto those later. So for now, just be aware of the different chords. You should know, hopefully, all of your open chords where the root note is. If you don't, then that's something you really need to check out. So if you're playing a C chord, what string is the note C on, right? On, on the thickest couple of strings. It's really important that you understand that, you know? 
Um, that's kind of basic guitar skill. So make sure that you know the, the patterns that fit with each of the different chords. Don't just practice C and G. Nice progression might be to practice C, G, A minor, F. Very, very common chord sequence. Which is obviously be fifth string root, sixth string root, fifth string root, sixth string root. Okay, there's about 10 billion songs that use that one, right? So just with this really simple little bit of info, these couple of patterns that we've looked at so far, there's a lot of mileage in it. So don't feel like you've got to rush too much. Don't, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. When you try and rush through these things, you won't get them. That, that you'll end up kind of not playing the pattern exactly right or playing the wrong strings half the time. And, and it's really, it's better to have these kind of, because we're going to get more complicated, right? But you want to get these basic patterns down. Really, I call it a default setting, you know, that the fingers automatically go to those strings and you've got these finger style patterns that you can just pull out straight away and they happen naturally. And it only happens through lots and lots and lots and lots of practice. So when you feel confident with these ones and you can do them properly and easily and they feel natural, then join me for the next lesson when we're going to break out the third finger and make the patterns just a little bit more complicated. See you for that lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.